It's beginning to look a lot like cirrhosis. Jaundice of the skin. From the hyperbelly rubin. Waste products of hemoglobin. Due to lack of bile production. It's beginning to look a lot like ascites. Fluid in the abdomen. From the portal hypertension, the lack of albumin, increased capillary pressure causing third space in. The liver exog recycling company with four major roles and responsibilities. Detoxing ammonia and drug metabolism, storing glycogen, producing bile coag factors and albumin. Encephalopathy. With altered LOC, too much ammonia in the blood, a bright product of protein metabolism, give lactulose to aid the excretion. It's beginning to look a lot like cirrhosis. Soon we'll do a paracentesis, drain the fluid from the abdomen, then give albumin. Bring the fluid back into the vascular spaces. Get over two hours of free liver lectures at simplenursing.com. 82% or higher on your next nursing test. Guaranteed. shorthand here. So continuing on in our lecture series of the liver, I went over in our first lecture PDSM Recycling Company, right? Recycling. All talking about turning your liver into a recycling company. The main functions of the liver. I call it PDSM because People drink so much. Recycling company. This stands for produce, detox, storage, as well as metabolize. So encephalopathy, really, focuses on the metabolizing parts of the liver. So what does metabolism have to do with encephalopathy? If you guys saw my very first lecture leading into this liver uh, lecture, uh, you would know that your um, liver will does metabolize ammonia into urea. Okay. Woo. Ur oh man. It's not an English class, okay? <laughs> Urea. This is a nursing help um, class, all right? <laughs> so ammonia turns into urea. Now, what the heck is ammonia? Um, if you guys saw my first lecture, you would know that ammonia is just the protein wrapper of a protein bar, we can call it. So I'll draw my protein bar right there. Protein bar. Ammonia is just this wrapper, the waste product of protein. So, what happens when there is a trash in the body? It goes directly to the liver to be metabolized into something that can be excreted. So, this waste product, this protein wrapper, I like call it, ammonia goes to the liver to be detox, I'm sorry, to be metabolized as urea excreted 
through the kidneys, and um, into the toilet. So, what happens if your liver is broken? Or if there's no blood flow into this scarosis, the scarring of the liver? Well, one thing, besides all the other functions of the blood, I'm sorry, of the liver, metabolism is not going to be um, able to be utilized. So you're not going to be able to convert that ammonia into urea. So what happens? That ammonia stays in the bloodstream, travels up into the brain, and now you have protein wrappers all over the body. You have basically trash that is really wreaking havoc on your body. And the main way that we realize this, and the main way that we um, can see it manifested, is ammonia being causing someone to have altered LOC. So I'll show you two things that we do in the medical field to combat these high ammonia levels. So guys, what do we know already about ammonia? When you eat protein, your protein breaks down into absorption, amino acids, right, and waste, the wrapper, ammonia. So, what do you think we want to do as medical professionals to make sure that we're not breaking down protein anymore? We don't want to cause any more wrappers to be circulating through the bloodstream. So, we're going to say, no more protein. Not rocket science, right? <laughs> so, no more protein. Because we do not want our small intestine to start breaking down protein and causing more wrappers. It's not really that difficult to understand that, <laughs> hopefully. So we say no protein to our um, cirrhosis patients or to our um, encephalopathy patients. Now, someone with cirrhosis, we just say low protein, um, not like you know, no protein at all, but uh, just you know, bring down the protein content. We want to cause less uh, protein wrappers to be in the body. All right. So what's the next thing that we do? We give something called lactulose. Now what does lactulose do? Lactulose acts as like a little um, garbage bin to scoop up this ammonia out of the blood and cause it to be excreted in uh, poop. So if you give lactulose, patients drink it, it's going to scoop up all the ammonia and it's going to cause the uh, patient to have number two very, very badly and very ferociously. So if you're going to give lactulose, um, make sure it's toward the end of your shift so that uh, you don't have to clean it up. You can leave it for next shift, okay? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, okay? <laughs> um, but uh, guys, just make sure that the patient can get to a commode or to the restroom when you give lactulose because it's going to cause them to, uh, you know, have really uh, meaningful, um, memorable bathroom visits, okay? So the last thing that we do for our encephalopathy patients to get rid of this ammonia is we do no protein, we do lactulose, but we also do something that... Um, is not commonly thought of in critical thinking. We give something called neomycin, or we can give another antibiotic that kills all of the bacteria in the gut that breaks down protein. So we're not only stopping the protein coming in, we're, we're um, taking the ammonia out of the bloodstream with lactulose. And we're also killing off all the bacteria 
inside our gut that breaks down protein. So we give neomycin, which pretty much is an antibiotic that goes in there like Rambo. It takes no prisoners. Um, it goes in and it kills the uh, good as well as the bad bacteria. So imagine if you had the SWAT team going into a bank where there's bank robbers, and imagine the SWAT team just gunning down the bank tellers, the managers, the employees, as well as the customers, with the good guys and bad guys as well. And that's really what neomycin does. It goes in, it kills off the bad bacteria, kills off the good bacteria, the normal flora, and it wipes out everything, which is not good. I mean, it's not good in the long term, it's very, very good in the short term, because we're decreasing the ammonia. So, we're stopping protein consumption, we're getting rid of the ammonia, and we're killing off the protein, um, the breakdown of protein, by killing off the bacteria with neomycin. So hopefully that makes a little more sense with our encephalopathy patients. So if you see your patient with a high ammonia level, expect them to be altered level of consciousness, okay? Not acting themselves, being very combative, and expect these therapeutic modalities to be in place, okay? So hopefully that helps you guys just a little. And stopping the protein consumption, using lactulose, using neomycin, what are some other nursing considerations that we want to implement with a patient with encephalopathy? So some nursing considerations would be, number one is safety, guys. Safety. Your patient has altered level of consciousness. You guys want to make sure that you're padding the side rails of the bed. You maybe even want to use restraints with a sitter at the bedside. Or, you know, a lot of hospitals don't like using restraints anymore. So they'll ask a family member to come in, sit with the patient, or they'll have a CNA sit at the bedside with the patient to promote safety for the patient. Because the last thing that the hospital wants is having an altered patient get out of bed, hurt themselves, and now there's a whole liability for the hospital, as well as not a good therapeutic outcome for the patient themselves. So guys, we already know which drugs we're gonna give, right? We're going to give our lactulose. We're also going to give our neomycin, excreting the uh, ammonia and stopping the breakdown of protein, neomycin. We're also going to promote our low to no protein diet. Really just depends on the severity of what the doctor orders, or the severity of the ammonia. And lastly guys, our fourth one is our skin integrity. Because, think about it, what does the liver produce? The liver produces our albumin. The liver produces our bile. The liver also produces our coagulation factors. So skin guys, if a patient is strapped down into the bed, for the entire shift, with increased um, risk for bleeding because there's no coagulation factors being produced anymore, you're talking about increased risk for bed sores, increased risk for open wounds, increased risk for greater bleeding, especially if the patient's moving around, bruising themselves because they're altered. So think about your skin integrity and think about um, also, pruritus. Just the inflammation of the skin, because high amounts of ammonia cause the skin to be very irritated in the body. So think about putting maybe um, cool compresses on. The patient might be itchy. Um, maybe putting some anti-itch lotion on the patient, because um, 
when you have high amounts of ammonia, it causes sometimes an inflammation of the derma, dermatitis, okay? So, safety with the patient with encephalopathy. The drugs, lactulose, neomycin. You're low to no protein. You want to stop that breakdown of protein into ammonia. And the skin and pruritus. We're going to have a risk for bleeding and increased itchiness, increased irritation of the skin. So hopefully that helps you guys just a little bit with helping your patient with encephalopathy as well as the nursing considerations that go into it.